We're famous artists. Yes, famous artists. Paul Gauguin. Edward Hopper. And then go. Oh! Pablo Picasso. I thought so. I'm Goya. Hawaii. We're definitely people you should know. Sandra Botticelli, Michelangelo, Paul Clay. The names just keep on coming and we haven't got all day. We're famous artists. Renoir! We're famous artists. Au revoir! Monet, Da Vinci, Peter Bruegel. Don't pitch me! Some people think we're geniuses. Some people think we're weird. Weird? What do you mean? Weird is a relative term. To lose the track. Mary Cassatt! And please don't touch my beard. Andy Warhol, Jacob Lawrence, Jackson Pollock, too. I'm afraid we have to go now. So we'll just say doodaloo. And if you think we're slightly nuts, that may be slightly true. The bad bye bye young viewer will leave up to you. Hello, I am Michelangelo Buonarroti. That's me, great artist, maybe the greatest ever. <laughs> That's what they say, I believe it, why argue? I'm working on my most famous statue. Most famous if you don't count the Pietà and the Moses, and of course this, <laughs> and it's pretty good too, not to mention this one. Well, back to this one. You know who he is? Didn't think so. Ever hear of David and Goliath from the Bible? This is David. Yes, he's naked. So what? Stick around. I'll teach you a lot more. Hey, don't fall asleep. I was born in Italy in 1475. We live just outside of the town of Florence. And when I was a baby, my mama was sick a lot and papa needed help. So he sent me away to live with a family of stonecutters. Stonecutters cut stone out of the quarry to be used for buildings and for art. Don't forget to bring home some more rocks for Michelangelo to play with. Uh, yes, dear. When I grew up, I joked that this was the reason I love to carve stone so much. That kind of carving is called sculpting, and that kind of art is called sculpture. I love to chip away at the stone to make a design, figure of a person, or animal. I sculpted many of my statues from big blocks of marble. I chipped away at the marble with a hammer and chisel until I got it the way I liked. This unfinished statue of St. Matthew shows how I started one of my statues. I left a lot of my work unfinished. So what? It was finished enough for me, huh? I made my statues very lifelike. Sometimes I would polish them so they looked smooth and shiny. But sometimes I would leave chisel marks. The marks helped give the statue shape and a feeling of being alive when viewed from a distance. I lived in just the right place and at just the right time. In the 1400s and 1500s, people in Florence were very interested in architecture, painting, poetry, and sculpture. I learned a lot about art walking through Florence. I loved the fresco paintings of Giotto and Masaccio that I saw on the walls of churches in Florence. And I especially admired the sculptures of Donatello the greatest sculptor in Florence. Well, before I came along, he makes the stone come alive. It, I'm sorry, not much detail, but still so beautiful. These artists lived and worked in Florence before I was born. When it was time to go to school at the age of 10, I have to admit I wasn't a very good student. I spent most of my time sketching and drawing pictures of the wonderful art I saw on my way to school. I made friends with boys who were apprentices with master artists in Florence, and that's how I got into the workshop of one of Florence's greatest teachers, Master Ghirlandaio. Hey, Michelangelo, you're really good. Come on, you should go to art school with me. Okay, sounds good. One of the most important things Master Ghirlandaio taught us was the difficult art of fresco painting. 
This is a special kind of painting where watercolors are applied on wet plaster walls. Frescoes can last a long time. This fresco is over 500 years old. Some are even older. Fresco painting became very handy later on when I began my most famous fresco painting, the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. And when painting a fresco, you got to work fast before the plaster dries. Oops! <laughs> eh, no time to fool around. Hey, boys, boys, how many times do I have to tell you? You want to work faster! At school, I learned so fast that even my teacher couldn't keep up with me. <laughs> I did this sketch when I was an art student. Look how I used the cross hatching to create the shading effect in a drawing. Even Master Ghirlandaio was amazed. Michelangelo, this is wonderful. What made you think of that? How do you know how to do that? Hmm, let's see. Um, could it be... Could it be I'm a genius? I learned a lot from Master Ghirlandaio, but I also learned a lot on my own about being an artist. In fact, I was so involved studying art, sometimes I would miss art classes. Mm -hmm. Michelangelo, don't you feel guilty about skipping Master Ghirlandaio's class again? No, just tell him if he needs any advice. I'll be right here. <laughs> you don't think I was great? Huh? When I was 16, guess what happened? The numero uno Cajuna Grande of Florence, Lorenzo de' Medici, invited me, me, to study at his palace where he had a school just for sculpture. This is a picture of him with some of his favorite art students. That's me, all the way over on the right. He was what they call a patron of the arts. Lorenzo loved art of all kinds and paid artists to create works of art for him. People who paid artists in this way were known as patrons. The Medici family had big money. Big. And they loved art. He gave the students materials, paint, marble, instruction. He gave us time to study, work, learn. I loved work, hard work, lots of it too. He wanted us to learn all kinds of things. He encouraged us to write poetry too. It was fabuloso. <clears throat> Listen to this, everybody. My new poem. Oh. Ahem. As I was saying, in praise to Lorenzo, I offer a rose to sniff with his nose. I thank you. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. You want to hear something good? Listen to this. Poem by Michelangelo Buonarroti. For from the stars above descends a glorious light that lifts our longing to their highest height and bears the name of love. Yeah, I was really great. The other students, eh, they were so-so. Oh, here, here comes the worst one, Torrigiano. I had a good time making fun of him un until one day. Hey, everybody, look what I made. Well, I call it Sunset with Dog and Macaroni. You call that art? I wouldn't use that as a doorstop. What? I wouldn't even dry my socks on that thing. <laughs> Why, you're making me mad. Huh? Huh? Is that your pet dog or your mama? Mama? Oh, that does it. I'm gonna flatten your nose like a biscuit. You broke my nose! Okay, so I wasn't the easiest person to get along with. Here's a sculpture of me. I didn't look very happy. Actually, I was miserable my whole life. And you can even see where Torrigiano broke my nose. That little... Here is one of the first sculptures I did at the Medici Palace. It's called Madonna of the Stairs. It's not carved all the way around, it's only carved on one side. This kind of sculpture is called a relief. Maybe because the artist was relieved, he only had to do one side. <laughs> 
so Da Vinci was funnier. So what? Another relief I made was of a battle that happened long before I was born. I wanted to show the human body in dramatic poses, fighting, struggling, muscle, tension, torsion, action, life. Ha! Ah! In order to get as much life in my sculpture as possible, I had to find out how the body was put together and how it worked. So, I snuck into the morgue where dead bodies are kept before burial. I had to keep it a secret, though, because if anyone had found out, it would be... I examined bodies by cutting into them like a scientist or surgeon. Oh, so that's how this works. Oh, oh. Would you look at that? I did not know it did that. Oh, so that's what that thing is for. I had no idea. Oh, look, that is disgusting. It was important to me to learn how the body looks underneath the skin so that I could show the look of the whole body with, you know, the skin on. Now I could better understand how to make the human figure look real, alive, beautiful. Okay, back to sculpture. I studied as much as I could to become a good sculptor, but it wasn't until I visited Rome that I showed people how good I really was. Rome was another great art city in Italy. I made a statue for a wealthy patron there that amazed everyone who saw it. This statue, called the Pietà, was so beautiful that people found it hard to believe that it was done by such a young artist. <laughs> I was only 24! This is how all my studying helped me. Look at this. See the detail? I became passionate about details. And look how smooth. Almost like polished glass or wax. It's beautiful. I can't believe it. I made something so, so beautiful, and I was only 24 when I finished it. <laughs> okay, enough. Back to Florence, my hometown. The big bosses in Florence heard about my great work in Rome, asked me to do a statue for them, even gave me a huge block of marble to work with. Michelangelo, we heard about your great work in Rome. We want you to do a statue for Florence, your hometown. Here is a huge block of marble. It's all yours, Michelangelo. Think of it as a present. Hey, hey, thanks, everyone. What a great block of marble, really. I can tell David is in there somewhere. Hello? Hello, David? I know you're in there. Let's help get him out. Come on, come out. Come out, come out, wherever you are. I'm going to come in and get you. In this statue, I wanted a lot of fine detail. Look at that foot, huh? The hand, even the hair. Look at David's face. I pictured him just before he was going to battle with Goliath the giant. He looks a little worried, right? But he's going to do it anyway. That's the idea. David was kind of like the people of Florence. Strong, brave, clever, and ready to defend their city. That's why the people of Florence loved it so much. And they loved me, too. We like Mike. We like Mike. Okay, back to Rome, 1506. Oh. During the time I was working on David, the powerful ruler of the church in Rome heard about me. Pope Julius II wanted to build beautiful churches and statues in Rome so that the people would remember him. He asked me to come there to work for him. Uh, Michelangelo, I have all kind of plans for you. I want to build a tomb so people will remember me. A real fancy. Oh, hmm. With, like, maybe statues on it? Yeah, maybe I'll have you do three or four. How about five or six? Well, how about a 10 or 20? Wow! How about 30 or 40? Fine, 40. You can't turn down a pope. 
especially Pope Julius. Not only was he head of the Catholic Church in Rome, Italy, but he was an important military general. His armies protected the church's territories. But most important, Pope Julius wanted to make Rome the most beautiful city in the world. I was so excited, I got started on the plans right away. I am Michelangelo. Yes, Your Holiness. I'm working on the plans for your tomb, Your Holiness. I have a better idea. How do you feel about painting your ceilings? What? Where is this guy coming from? Painting ceilings? I don't paint. I'm a sculptor. All I do is sculpt. I don't paint. Well, you're gonna paint now. My chapel, it's boring. It needs something. I know scenes from the Bible. Under the ceiling, something like that. Your Holiness, have you ever considered wallpaper? Uh, no. What about Raphael? He's not busy. Nuh-uh. I had no choice. But if I have to do it, it's going to be my way. The Pope and I had lots of arguments. You missed a spot, missed a spot, you missed a spot. I'm not finished. And when will you be finished? When it's ready. Well, when will it be ready? When I'm finished. I told you I'm not a painter. It took Michelangelo four years to complete the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. He painted many scenes from the Bible. One of the most famous scenes shows God giving life to Adam. Michelangelo painted the figures so they looked three-dimensional, filled with a life and movement. He painted like no other artist before. I'm glad I pushed him into painting the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Suddenly, Michelangelo became known as one of the greatest painters in the world, whether he liked it or not. Painting. Phooey! That's nothing compared to sculpture. After four hard years of painting, I couldn't wait to get back to sculpting the tomb with all those statues. But first, I had to go and get the marble from the quarry. Heads up! Look out below! <laughs> Finally, I can start on my statues. Uh, Michelangelo, wait a minute. What do you mean, wait a minute? Who are you? Pope Julius died. And I'm the new Pope Leo X. That's who. And now you work for me. I need a new chapel. You can't turn down a Pope. And that's so fast. So who are you? I'm the new, new Pope. Pope Leo X died. And I need some place to put my books. A, uh, library. Uh, I'm with a new, new, new Pope Paul III. And, uh... What happened to... Ah, uh, never mind. I need more paintings in the Sistine Chapel. How about doing a wall this time? I'm the new, 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 new Pope. And I need a big, fancy door. I need a I right need a church. Window, maybe some I need glass. a statue right I now. I need an onion and anchovy pizza. After 40 years and five popes later, I finished Pope Julius's tomb. This is its most important statue, Moses. I gave the people in my sculptures and pictures a special energy and strength. Even though Moses is sitting very still, he has a feeling of tension and power, as if he might jump up at any minute. Throughout my life, I created many beautiful and important paintings and statues. I was also fascinated by architecture, building buildings. I designed a chapel for the Medici family. You remember Lorenzo di Medici, my patron? and this library, and this doorway to the city of Rome called Porta Pia. 
and this piazza in Rome called the Campidoglio. And I designed the front wall of a church in Florence, but like a lot of my work, never finished, but still beautiful. Pope Paul III had me do another gigantic painting on the wall in the Sistine Chapel called The Last Judgment. One of my best, eh? It shows the end of the world. How could I miss? But not everyone agreed. Do you see what I see? Hey, nobody's got no clothes on. Yeah. Wasn't anybody keeping an eye on the artist? No, this, uh, I don't know about this. This, this is outrageous. Is... Right, that's what I, I can't think bring my family to this. Me neither. Oh, do something about it. No. And there's another this one over terrible. there. It's nobody's got no clothes on. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's a church. A Years later, some touchy people came along and painted pants on everybody. But I didn't care because my next big project turned out to be the most important of my life, even though I didn't want to do it at first. The same pope I just worked for wanted me to design the dome on St. Peter's Cathedral near the Sistine Chapel. I was already 71 years old and boy was I tired. But the pope insisted and changed my mind. Michelangelo. Yes, your holiness. Do it. Yes, Your Holiness. You can't turn down a Pope. I worked on the dome for the next 18 years up until the age of 89. Well, I guess it was worth it because St. Peter's became one of the most famous and recognized cathedrals in the whole world. I was working on this sculpture called the Rondanini Pietà up until a few days before I died. Some people think it is my most beautiful sculpture, even though it isn't finished. You can finish it in your imagination. You know why I worked right up until a few days before I died? Because I loved art. I loved hard work. I loved sculpture. I loved architecture. Well, my young friends, it was good to get to know you. Art is a wonderful thing to study, and to do. It's, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. So maybe you like to try it. You never know, you might like it. Eh, ciao. Arrivederci, ragazzi. Bye now. Thank you.